This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 128. Everything is my fault, and I love being wrong, by Derek Sivers of Sivers.org. Get ready to maximize your potential with Optimal Living Daily, the podcast that brings you the best in personal development and productivity every day of the week. Your optimal life awaits. Now here's your host, Justin Mollick. Hello, Life Optimizers. Welcome to the original Optimal Living Daily podcast, the one and only podcast where I read to you the best blogs I can find on personal development and more. And there is another podcast that covers personal finance that is a spinoff of this show called Optimal Finance Daily, but that's where Dan reads to you, not me. But he's cool, so check out that show too. And I'm back for Sivers Sunday already. That was quick. And today features two short posts from Derek Sivers himself, who I've always felt an eerie connection to. If you're curious what I'm talking about, check out episode 44, where I explain the whole story. It's a unique one, and the very first time I did Sivers Sunday. And really quick, if you want to do something super easy and free to make my day and show your support, you can join my weekly newsletter. All you have to do is text the word OPTIMAL to the number 44222, or you can also go through the web and visit oldpodcast.com, and that's another way to join for free. I think that's enough of an intro, so let's jump right in and start optimizing your life. Everything is My Fault by Derek Sivers of Sivers.org. I cut two chapters out of my book because they were too nasty. They vented all the awful details about how my terrible employees staged a mutiny to try to get rid of me and corrupted the culture of the company into a festering pool of entitlement focused only on their benefits instead of our clients. Afterwards, I spent a few years still mad at those evil brats for what they did. So like anyone feeling victimized and wronged, I needed to vent to tell my side of the story, or so I thought. So do you want to know the real reason I cut those chapters? I realized it was all my fault. I let the culture of the company get corrupted. I ignored the problems instead of nipping them in the bud. I was aloof in a way instead of managing or training managers. I confused everyone by sharing my daily thoughts before they had cemented into decisions. I announced decisions, then assumed they were being done without following up to ensure. I whimsically delegated to the wrong people, avoiding the mental work of choosing wisely. I could list another 20 of these, but you get the idea. It felt so, so good to realize it was my fault. This is way better than forgiving. When you forgive, you're still playing the victim, and they're still wrong, but you're charitably pardoning their horrible deeds. But to decide it's your fault feels amazing. Now you weren't wronged. They were just playing their part in the situation you created. They're just delivering the punchline to the joke you set up. What power. Now you're like a new superhero just discovering your strength. Now you're the powerful person that made things happen, made a mistake, and can learn from it. Now you're in control and there's nothing to complain about. This philosophy feels so good that I playfully decided to apply this everything is my fault rule to the rest of my life. It's one of those base rules like people mean well that's more fun to believe and have a few exceptions than to not believe at all. The guy that stole $9,000 from me? My fault. I should have verified his claims. The love of my life that dumped me out of the blue by email after six years? My fault. I let our relationship plateau. Someone was rude to me today? My fault. I could have lightened their mood beforehand. Don't like my government? My fault. I could get involved and change the world. See what power it is? Yes, the word responsibility is more accurate, but it's such a serious six-syllable word, whereas everything's my fault is a fun rule of thumb and gets me singing Nirvana's all apologies. Try it on. Stand up, open the window, look out at the world and shout, everything is my fault. Think of every bad thing that happened to you and say it again. Cool, huh? That power looks good on you. I Love Being Wrong by Derek Sivers of Sivers.org Most of the time I feel smart, successful, and driven, like I've got it all figured out. But last month, a bunch of stuff knocked me on my ass. I've never felt so wrong. I vulnerably called on friends for help. Amber reminded me to pull my head out of today and think long-term again. Jeff told me to get my swagger back and relish the moment. Ariel said I should really accept and feel this pain instead of moving on so fast like I always do. Each different perspective made me feel good for a while, then I'd fall back into the whirlpool of destructive thoughts. Whenever something's wrong in my life, I've asked myself this amazing question, what's great about this? 
But now my only answer was, nothing, this just sucks. I tried asking it again every day or two, but the answer was the same. Down the whirlpool I went. After moping at the bottom of the ocean for a few weeks, I got a bright memory from my former self. I actually love being wrong, even though it cracks my confidence, because that's the only time I learn. I actually love being lost, even though it fuels fears, because that's when I go somewhere unexpected. I pursue these things in small, digestible doses. I love little lessons that surprise my expectations and change my mind. This is why I aim to make my TED Talk surprising. If we're not surprised, we're not learning. But I finally answered what's great about this. Getting knocked on my ass made me humble as hell. It's been years since I'd called for help. It's been years since my cup was so empty. It's been years since I was so open to advice. I smiled, thinking of how much I've learned from my friends these past few weeks. I realized how ultimately happy it makes me to be so empty, even if it really hurts at first. It's better than thinking I've got it all figured out. And with that, the sun came up and the whirlpool went away. Thank you, life. Thank you, friends. You just listened to the post titled, Everything is My Fault and I Love Being Wrong by Derek Sivers of Sivers.org. This is why I love Derek. He's so humble. And he gave away $20 million. Again, if you want to hear my intro episode and plus some music my band made back in the day, check out episode 44, which is the very first Sivers Sunday ever. And if you enjoy this podcast or Optimal Finance Daily, either one really, you could do something really nice for us and that is to simply join my weekly newsletter. You'll get multiple spreadsheet gifts to help you optimize your life, a video tutorial, and be entered to win a book every month, all that for free. So to join, you can visit me online at oldpodcast.com, or if you'd like to text in, you can text the word OPTIMAL to the number 44222. And that's one more Sivers Sunday in the bank. It's kind of crazy to me that it's been three months since the first one back in January. So much has happened since then. But anyway, I'll be back with Minimalist Monday tomorrow with Joshua Becker. So I'll see you there where your optimal life awaits. Hey, this is Dan from the Optimal Finance Daily Podcast, which is a lot like this show, except more focused on personal finance. Justin handpicks the best posts he can find from blogs and authors like Ramit Sethi, Mr. Money Mustache, and more, and I read them to you five days a week. So if you enjoy this podcast, come on over and subscribe to Optimal Finance Daily too. And together, we'll optimize your financial life. You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.